be in trouble. Uh, my, my spiritual father sent me a message this morning. He said, I prophesied this morning you'll have a greasy anointing. And ever since then, my hands has just been moist for some reason. I can't. I don't know if they sweat or if it's the grease, but we're about to Judge chapter 19, you'll see. Amen. We've been on this series, Spiritual Authority. Amen. I am going to keep going with spiritual authority. Amen. I'm excited about it. But the Lord is speaking. Amen. Amen. The goal in this series is for us to leave on a Sunday and come back on a Sunday still excited. Amen. Amen. The goal is not to preach you happy on Sunday, you defeated Monday through Saturday. Then I got to preach you happy again. So the goal of this series is to preach you happy, give you power, give you confidence. That way when you come back next week, it would have manifested itself and you still excited. Amen. Then we can go to the next level because otherwise we just got to start back at ground zero. Yeah. So we want to continue to go from glory to glory. And the way to do that is to have enough anointing and power that when we come back, we have already transitioned and then we take off to the next level. Amen. 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 John chapter 19. I actually only have one verse, but I'm going to do three because I feel like I ain't did nothing. I don't give you more than one verse, but um. So we're going to go with three. All right, read them. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked the sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Father, we come to you, God, in the name of Jesus. I surrender my will to your will. I surrender who I am to you, oh God. I'm nobody without you. God, I surrender my lips, my mind, my heart, this vessel to you, oh God. I am a nobody, God. I'm a man of unclean lips, oh God. But I need your power and your glory, oh God, so that you can preach your unadulterated word, oh God. I pray, God, that you lay line upon line, precept upon precept, oh God. And I declare your word shall go forth with power like never before, oh God. And God, I declare that as this word drop in our spirit, oh God, you will begin to change our mind and change our hearts and change our situations and empower us, oh God, with word in our mouth, oh God, that as we declare a thing, oh God, it shall come to pass. And Father God, I thank you now, oh God, I thank you, oh God, oh God, for everything that comes in, oh God, that tries to hinder the word, oh God. We'll stand flat-footed and proclaim what you have said, oh God, for we are not afraid of the enemy, oh God, and we come, oh God, to run enemies out of homes, out of minds, out of hearts, oh God, and we're declaring and we're declaring we're decreeing, oh God, that your people, oh God, is getting ready for a next level, oh God. They're getting ready, oh God, to move to the next place, oh God. They're getting ready to transition, oh God, to a new location in you, oh God. I am declaring, oh God, that those that have been hiding in the secret place, oh God, they're getting ready to come out of hiding, oh God. Full of power, full of grace, full of anointing, oh God, and full of word, oh God. And I declare that the thirst has been quenched, oh God, and I declare that up and shall flow rivers of water in Jesus name oh God we declare that it is so every heart said amen amen, amen. 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 I want you to look at your neighbor before you take your seat and say neighbor, neighbor. the preacher, preacher. going to talk about, talk about your, your getting ready, get ready to finish strong, to finish strong. you're getting ready to finish strong amen, amen. you're getting ready to finish strong Get ready to finish strong. Amen. Get ready to finish strong. This is spiritual authority part two. So if, you, if you've been taking notes, I, I unction you to take notes. This is spiritual authority part two. Finishing strong. Amen. Oh, thank you. Last week, we, we talked about Spiritual authority and the Lord giving you power over your domestic affairs. So the first 
thing that spiritual authority does is it gives you power over your domestic affairs. Say, I have power over my domestic affairs. I have power over my domestic affairs. Number one, he gives you power and authority at your house and over everything that comes into your house. He gives you power and authority over your domestic affairs. Say, over my domestic affairs. Over my domestic affairs. Part two of spiritual authority. Uh, the second definition of spiritual authority, if you're writing down, this is what we're going to talk from today. Part two of spiritual authority. Hey, Daryl. How you doing? <laughs> hey, man. Part two of spiritual authority. This is the second definition of spiritual authority. It's the concept of authority referring to the power, ability, or capability to complete an action. We'll read it again. It is the concept of authority that refers to the power, the ability, or the capability to complete an action. Spiritual authority, the second thing that it does for you, it gives you the ability, the capability, and the power to complete an action. Let the church say complete. complete. The greatest crime happening now, not in the world, but in the kingdom. The greatest crime happening in the kingdom of God is that this epidemic has hit the church, which is the same epidemic that we see in the natural, but this epidemic has hit the church, and I've talked about it before, but the Lord brought it back in my spirit. This epidemic is ADHD in the kingdom. The, the people of God have spiritual ADHD. Yeah. What am I saying? The greatest hindrance in the body of Christ is that Christians lack the ability to focus on any one thing. They lack the ability to focus. Let the church say focus. focus. They lack the ability to focus. And what happens is they start a thing that they don't finish. Yeah. They start a thing and they don't finish it. And, and, and because of this, because of they, them having spiritual ADHD, he says because they have lack of focus, they do not complete anything. And we start a lot of good stuff. And a lot of God stuff. But we are not finishing. We start ministries. They, are, they stop functioning. We start working hard and we dedicate it. And then we stop coming. We were once committed. We're no longer committed. We get sidetracked. We allow something to creep in and it still steals our focus. Let the church say focus. focus. What good is a start with no end? Oh, I'm preaching real good. What good is a successful startup in any business, but you don't have the power to close? Oh, yeah, that's real good. So then I checked it out. I used to play baseball, and they said, uh, you know, the main weapon on the baseball team is the pitcher. So, so if you had a great starting pitcher, then you'll do well. But a good starting pitcher is no good without a closer. Y'all yes. don't want to hear what I'm saying. Talk to him. Talk to him. See, you can, you can start a pitcher and a pitcher can pitch seven innings and throw a no-hitter. But if you got a sorry closer, the team will still manage to lose the game. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. And so what the Lord is trying to drop in this house today, he is trying to drop the power to close and not just to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we open loans and we, we go out and we try to get homes and we don't have the power to close. Y'all don't want to hear what I'm saying. We don't have power to close the loan. We don't have the credit score. But the Lord is raising us up now with the power to close. Yeah. Let the church say, I'm about to have the power to close. See, 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 we shouldn't just want to start something good and you don't want to complete it. I don't know anybody that starts out doing something that don't have the goal to finish. Yeah. God is releasing in this building this morning as I'm preaching the power to finish strong. The authority to focus long enough to finish. Yeah. Yeah. So he says to me, he says, many of us, we've been getting off track. You have been away from it too long. You're not consistent long 
enough. You lose interest. You lose motivation. Most of you, you don't lose motivation or interest. You lose momentum. Yeah. Let the church say, I've lost momentum. Anything that loses its momentum will start losing power. Ah. I said, well, prove it to me, Lord. So I checked out the dam and the water. And so I found out that there is a thing that rotates in the water that creates a momentum that produces power. But when the momentum stops, so does the power. And that's when we experience power outages because the momentum has slowed down. And most of you, you are in here, but you have lost momentum. You have lost the ability to be consistent long enough to produce enough power to manifest what you've been looking to manifest. Yeah. So I say, Lord, talk to me a little bit about momentum. I said, okay, so I looked it up, of course. You know, I ain't no scientist, but I think I'm a physicist, physicist if I study anything. So I looked it up and I found out that momentum has a formula. Okay. <laughs> Everything has a formula. Yeah. So I looked up momentum's formula. Momentum's formula is mass times velocity. Write that down. It's mass times velocity. It is the weight of a thing and the speed of a thing. Yeah. It is the weight of a thing. And it's the speed of a thing. Watch this. So the heavier something is, the faster it comes down. Oh, I'm talking real good. Y'all can catch this just in just a second. This means the more something weighs or the more weight something has, the faster it will travel coming down. But if you are trying to go up, the faster you go up, weight you have, your weight can be your worst enemy. I don't want to hear what I'm saying. And most of us, we're not trying to come down. We're trying to go up. But the reason why you keep falling as you're trying to go up is because you're too weighty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you got too much weight. You got too much on your mind. You got too much in your heart. You got unforgiveness. You got bitterness. You got hatred. You got anger. You got there is deceit, and the more you have in your heart and on your mind and in your life, the more weight you have, and that's why you keep falling. Oh, yeah, 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 that's real good. So weight helps you fall quicker. Let the church say weight helps me fall quicker. Weight helps me fall quicker. So this tells me, I'm going to prophesy to you, I want you to high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, you need to drop a couple of pounds. You got to come down a couple of pounds. If you want to go up, you got to come down a couple of pounds. You got too much weight on you. You got too much going on in your mind. You wrestling with too much. You trying to be successful, but you can't because you didn't pick up too much weight. I, I wish I could find a prophetic church right there. Some of you got so much weight in your spirit and you trying to win and trying to have victory, but you can't because you picked up too much weight. But this weight, this weight, weight. God says, this weight, he says, this weight, you can give it back. See, see, most of the time when you gain weight, you got to work it off. But this weight, God said, that you have gained in your mind and in your heart, in your spirit, you need to just start giving it back to the people it belongs to. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? Baby, I love you, or you may be mad as hell, but I can't hold this weight. Let me give it back. I, I want to be mad as hell and I want to be angry at you, but I can't if I want to go up. And the only way to go up and not fall down, I got to give you this weight back. Oh yeah, I got to give you this weight back. Some of us got to start forgiving. Some of us got to, y'all, y'all don't want to hear what? Some of us got to ask the Lord to purify our heart so he can get rid of the weight. How about your neighbor say, share a couple of pounds? You know, the only way to share a couple of pounds. The only way to share a couple of pounds, you got to live a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Come on now. Your lifestyle got to be healthier, you know. Right. You can't feed yourself bad stuff. Right. <laughs> can't feed yourself bad stuff. You can't let bad stuff into your body. Right. A lot of us, we open our minds and our lives and our time 
up to conversation that are filled with weight. Yeah. You see, it's good people talking to you and they don't mean no harm. They have good intentions, but when they open their mouths to speak, they are not releasing anything but weight. They complain and it's a weight. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? And they are wait. And so the Lord revealed to me this picture in my mind. He says, watch this. He says, your weight, you're holding it. He says, but what you need to do is you need to make up your mind today that you're going to start divvying it back out. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to give it back. These pounds don't belong to you. You're going to give it back. You go, you go, you go. If you want to win and you want to be victorious, you got to learn to give it back. Because see, the trick of the enemy is he wants you to hold on to things that have done you wrong. Hold on to people who've done you wrong. He wants you to hold on to disappointment and hurt and let it build to something else more weightier. And see, now he's not attacking your health. He's allowing the weight to attack your health. Y'all yeah, don't want to hear what I'm saying. He's not attacking your mind. He's allowing the weight to attack Just signs that 
you got pounds on that don't belong to your body. Yeah. It belongs to somebody, but just not my body. Just not your body. Make 
yourself work. You got to focus to finish. You got sometimes you got to make yourself go home early so you can be before the presence of the Lord. The first thing you should learn when you learn spiritual authority and you learn to focus, you learn self control. Yes. That's why temperance is a fruit of the spirit. Let the church say focus. Focus. The first place your authority should work. Your, your first place that your authority should work should be in yourself. If you don't have authority over yourself, you sure can't have no authority over no demon. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You have to adopt the mindset that I don't want to, but I have to. I don't feel like it, but I have to. I'm not up to it, but it's a must. Flesh, today you will obey. Flesh, we are about to pray. Flesh, we are going to church. Flesh, we are going to church. Flesh, we are going to church. Flesh, I know you don't feel like it. We are going to church. Flesh, we are going to church. Flesh, we are going to pray. Flesh, we are going to lift our hands. Flesh, you're going to open up your mouth. Flesh, you're going to say amen even if you don't feel like it. <laughs> the first place he attacks you is he attacks you in the place of a closed mouth. <laughs> he wants you to shut your mouth. He wants to kill your voice. If he kills your voice, he kills your spiritual authority. When he kills your voice and your spiritual authority, he kills the power for you to finish. <laughs> He's not after your house. He's after the finish. In the text, Jesus had one purpose and one purpose alone, and that was to go to the cross and die for all of us. He went after his family. He was after the finish. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? He was after the finish. See, the enemy, he's okay with you starting good. He's okay with you starting to prophesy. He's okay with you starting to be an intercessor. He's okay with you starting to pray, starting to go to church, starting to be committed. What he don't want to happen is he don't want you to finish. you to finish. Right, he don't want you to finish. I wish I had 10 people right here to just tell themselves, you preach it real good. <laughs> they tell yourself to finish. <laughs> when you learn to have authority over self, you will start getting more accomplished. Yeah. You will start getting better results. <laughs> you know a great way to check if your authority works? You ask yourself how many things you've completed this year. Oh, that's good right there. I'm gonna let that soak in. If, if you want to check if you got real authority, tell me how many things you completed, how many goals you accomplished in the last two months, in the last six months, in the last two years, some of y'all last five years, the last ten years. Then check and see how many things you started, but you didn't finish. And all of the attacks that you had in between, you thought they was about you. They weren't about you. They was about getting you to stop from finishing. I can't give no amens right there. See, a lot of you thought that he was after your children and after your car and after your house. He wasn't after that. He was just trying to get you to quit on what God had started. Y'all want to hear what I'm He didn't want you to finish. He wanted you to give up. And see, you thought giving up was being depressed. Commit suicide. Uh-huh. See. See, the, the demon is so clever that he'll make you think that all these things that we call giving up, like being sad, don't come to church, don't come to Bible study, don't be around nobody. That's throwing in the towel. No, that ain't throwing in the towel. You really giving up when you started something that God had called you to start, but you didn't finish. That's giving up. Huh? Y'all, y'all. He said that you're gonna have many days on earth, but they are filled with trouble. But I still gave you power in the trouble to finish. Anointing, not for you to shout and to speak in tongues and not for you to prophesy, but he just wants you to finish something. I don't care what you do before the end of the year, just finish something. Watch this. What he said. He says, when you have tapped into real authority, I'm almost done. You gain the power, definition two of spiritual authority. You gain the power, I gave this to you at the beginning, to complete.
complete an action. God told me to stop right here and said, tell y'all, now, the rest of my message is the anointing is dropping for you to finish. Okay? The anointing is dropping for you to finish. I don't care how many goals you've had that have dropped and you dropped the ball on them. God will give you the power to pick them up again and finish strong. I said, Lord, how do you want me to explain that that's a true fact? He says, watch this, finishing is the main goal of authority. When Jesus had accomplished what God had purposed for him to accomplish, what did he say? Put up verse 30. Read it, Bridget. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. Read it again. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. Finished. He said, first, wait, before I finish this thing off, give me something to drink. <laughs> I'm a little thirsty. Give me something to drink. He drank it. He wet his mouth. He said, because I want everybody to hear what I'm about to say. Because see, all of his temptations since I've been on earth, it was all about this moment right here. He didn't want me to make it to this place right here. And before I say it with a dry mouth, I'm going to say it with a wet mouth. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? And then, watch it. He don't look at his mother. He don't look at his friends. But he looks at the enemy. The Bible says he looks up and he says, he said, it is finished. Now, that ain't got no power until I check one thing out. And I said, Lord, what is the power in that? He says, a lot of things there's a power in that. But he says, I'm going to tell you one thing. He says, watch this. After Jesus said that, the enemy can no longer kill something that has already died. Y'all don't miss that on the wrong side of the church right there. You see, he, he might try to kill you, but because you've been born again, you already died. But even though he's giving you hell and high water, he can't take you out. Because at the cross, Jesus said, it is. I wish I could find a 
real church like that. God says he's getting ready to make some of y'all complete. Flow and do in your emotions complete. In your mind complete. In your family complete. In your relationship complete. In your speech. You know? Against all odds, yeah. you have won. I am successful despite the odds. Yeah. Done. So I said, Lord, I need a word right here that I can prophesy. He says, prophesy what I told you. I said, okay. He says, tell you, you are not a failure. You had the right idea with the wrong team. But God is getting ready to anoint some of you with a brand new team. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? The reason why it fell through was not because it wasn't God. You just had a God idea with the wrong team. But today the Lord is anointing some of you with a brand new team. Don't think it's strange when folks start connecting to you and you, you are the person that don't trust these. And I know you don't trust easy. You don't let people in your circle. But these people, God is bringing them around because he's anointing you with the power to finish. But he's going to give you a brand new team. Why do you need a brand new team, girl? Because if the team that you got now was working, you would have already finished. Y'all, I wish I could have ran to the new church and back again. If you got the right team, baby, then you would have already finished. Y'all want to hear this because your cousin on your team and your best friend on your team and your childhood friend since elementary school is on your team. But baby, if they could help you get to destiny, you would be there by now. So you got to have them. I wish I could find a real church right there. If it was the right team, you would have finished by now. So don't be mad when the Lord start bringing new people around and the old people walk away. And I'm going to replace it with your. 
He said, so in this next scene, he said, prophesy to the believers and the receivers. And he said, tell them, I'm going to bring them to their expected end. Yeah. He says, but because of the nature of what you're in now, some of you have lowered your expectations. So in order to get a good end, you got to raise your expectations back. So the Lord says, before I can give you your expected end, he says, first you got to let me raise your level of expectation. Because if I don't, the end that you will have won't look like God. Okay, so I says, let's go a little bit deeper. Of course, I got to go a little bit deeper, right? Say, go a little bit deeper. It's in not the past tense. It's in the perfect tense. It's in the perfect tense. I say, what does that mean? So then he said, stop right here and say this. So I'm going to say it. He gave me all kind of commercials. Y'all ready? He says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the preacher is about to say. Which is finish. When he said it, it wasn't in the past tense because finish has an ED. So most of us, if we had to classify that word, we would have called it past tense because of the ED. So any word has an ED on it, meaning it was past, right? It has already happened. But when Jesus said it, it was happening. Y'all, y'all with me, right? It was happening. But not only was it happening, it was going to happen. In the future. So he says it's in the perfect tense. So I say, okay, what does perfect tense mean? Perfect tense means something has been completed in the past with results continuing in the present. Okay. That, that's real good. Right there. So that means that even though Jesus had finished it in the past, when he it was finished in the perfect tense. He was saying that the past results will continue in my future. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I said, what are you saying, Lord? He said, what happened at the cross? He said, it's been happening and it's still happening right now in the church service, y'all. In effect today, I say, what is in effect? He says, when Jesus cried out, it is finished, he meant it was finished in the past, it is still finished in the present, and it will remain finished in the future. So anything that you dropped in your past, you get ready to pick it up because it can't just stop there. It's got to finish. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? God said it can't stop where it stops, but it's got to finish because he would be a man that he would lie and he's not a liar. is getting ready to come back together. He said, because it's got to finish and it's got to finish strong. I said, okay, wait, 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 wait. I said, well, why is it finishing strong, Tori? Janelle, he says, because most folk, when they finish, they say, I survived. Right. <laughs> say, how you doing? Did you get done? Girl, I survived. <laughs> that means that you completed it or you finished but you ain't finished strong. You finished with some doubt. You, you finished with, I don't know. It is what it is. Y'all ain't gonna go with me. And a lot of you, that's how some of your tasks, you come out of them. You said that you finished, but you were more of a survivor. But Jesus in the text, he was not a survivor. And the Lord told me to tell you, stop saying you are surviving or you are a survivor. You are not a survivor. He says because what is in you is the spiritual authority that's happening right now. And that word is finished. So I checked it out. And I looked at it in a different translation. And the word it is finished had an exclamation point. 
So, then I said, well, that don't mean nothing. I looked at it again. I looked at the period there. And if you go in English class, most folks will say that was a declarative statement. Right. I'm going to teach you. It's a declarative statement. But then I said, what is a declarative statement? Then I looked it up. And I remembered, when you make a declarative statement, it is a command. Yeah. Wait a minute. That ain't, that ain't nothing, right? So he says it's a declarative statement because it got a period at the end, right? If it had an exclamation point, it means he was saying it loud or yeah. aggressive, right? Yeah. But I said, okay, I, he right here in the King James ain't got no exclamation point. He got a period. So I said, what does it mean? He says it's a declarative statement. I said, okay. He said, take the end off the declarative. He said, and it was he, it was something he was declaring. Come on, Jesus. Y'all don't catch that in just a second. So when he was at the cross, before he gave up the ghost, he decided that he would prophesy into your future. He says, bridging all the way three and four thousand years later, baby, you gonna finish. But not all, you're not just gonna finish, and you're not gonna be a survivor, but you're gonna finish strong. And you're gonna finish so strong that you're gonna have the power and the authority to prophesy and declare the anointing to finish to somebody else. Y'all don't wanna hear what I'm saying? So y'all, 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 y'all. So the cross was not the end, it was only the beginning. It was the end of Christ's sign. You can finish. High five your neighbor say, I'm getting ready to finish something. I don't know what it is before 2018 is out. I'm going to finish and I'm going to finish strong. Baby, these moves got to go. These attitudes got to go. This, you know what you saying? This depression got to go. This sadness got to go because I'm getting ready to finish. And I'm not just going to survive. I'm going to finish strong. I'm going to finish with the right attitude. I'm going to finish with joy. I'm going to finish with peace. I'm going to finish like I started. He says, when you finish strong, you finish with as much as much strength as you had when you started. And it makes the enemy mad as hell because all the stuff that he threw at you, it should have weighed him down. I don't want to hear what I'm saying. I'm prophesying to somebody right here. He says, all the stuff that you've gone through, it should have took you out. It should have weighed you down. But the question is, why are you not dead? And why have you not committed suicide? That was because the power of what Jesus declared over your life is still in operation. Baby, you got to finish, and you ain't going to die early, and you ain't going to die before time, because you got to finish it. Whatever the assignment is, you got to finish it. You got to finish it. You got to finish it. We're standing. I'm done. I'll pick up next week. This is blessing, y'all. This is blessing. Yes, yes. The enemy is not after what you think he's after. He's after your finish. He's, y'all, he is after your finish. He don't want you to finish it. So the reason why he throws so much at you is to discourage you from finishing. Because when you finish, it proves what Jesus said on the cross. <laughs> it proves that guess what? You always had the victory. Even before you started and even in the midst of it, the victory belonged to you. You just couldn't see it. But it was always there. So when you finish, you are saying to him, ah uh -huh. <laughs> Nah, nah, the boo boo. <laughs> You know, when we was little, when somebody thought they got you, nan and boo boo, you can't get me. See, many of you, the enemy thought he got you. But the Lord said, he ain't got you. Hallelujah.
hallelujah, in spiritual authority, knowing that I know the devil's tactic. He's not after all my stuff. He's after me finishing. He just don't want me to complete this thing. But the devil is a lie. I will fulfill my assignment. I will fulfill purpose. I will fulfill the will of the Lord. And not only will I fulfill it, guess what? I'm going to not just be a survivor. I'm going to finish strong. I'm going to finish strong. So I declare strength back into you now. I declare your peace be released back to you now. I declare that your joy be released back to you now. I declare that your self-esteem come back up now. I declare that your confidence come back now in the name of Jesus. Because I declare that they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. He shall renew their strength. It is finished. Tomorrow when you wake up, it is finished again. Uh, it is finished in the perfect tense. Not just today. It's finished tomorrow. And it's finished next year. And your 2019 will be filled with a whole bunch of goals that you have finished. I promise I let open your life. You will finish what you have started. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Give God a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah.